Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to Two Toe Tags Metal Reviews. And today we're giving you guys our first impressions of the big new release from Mental Cruelty. So only one new release this week, but it is a big one. Zweilicht from Mental Cruelty has finally released. We did check out two singles, Nordleys and Forgotten King. Forgotten Kings. That one I kind of forgot about doing, but I know we checked out two. Yeah. And um, I didn't remember too, too much, but I'm kind of glad because then I got to experience this album super duper fresh without any recollection of hearing mm -hmm. um, what the other stuff sounded like. So so it was purely fresh. And I feel like like the first track is a really cool um, like opening... Um, Instrumental. Instrumental like with the orchestra. And then once the second song hits, it's fire out the gate. Like, okay, they're not messing around. And that's awesome. Now I will say, let's get the let's address the, the possible elephant in the room that this band and this album sound is a similar style to that of Laura Shore. Yeah. And a lot of people are gonna make that comparison. A lot of people are gonna see that Laura Shore is kind of the popular symphonic or orchestral deathcore band. Um, if you want my honest opinion, I think these guys do it better. Yeah. Straight up. I think a lot of songs um, have so much to them that they have depth. Mm -hmm. So, for example, that second track um, has exactly what I suggested Lotus <laughs> try. Clean vocals. Not even for long. Just, just near the end they have it. And I do think they sound great. Um, there's also a speaking part in it as well. That's super cool. It's the kind of song that I'm listening to. It's like, where the hell are they gonna go? Mm -hmm. Like, it goes. It's like you're walking around in this labyrinth, and you're like, okay, I don't even know what's around this corner. There's gonna be a monster that kicks my ass, or not? Who knows? And I thought that was super duper cool. Um, other songs. Uh, there was another song near the end. Um, Symphony of a Dying Star. <laughs> this song is. Think. Now, the title track, which is right before it, is an interlude um, that has clean vocals in German, which is super duper cool. And then that leads right into Symphony of a Dying Star, which um, ha also has a little bit of clean vocals. Near the end, it's also got a key change, which is one of the last things I would have expected to hear today um, out of this album. But I loved it, and I, and I feel like this um, album was just it doesn't, for the most part, it didn't feel like it was repetitive. There was a part kind of in the middle chunk, I was maybe thinking it from a track or two, but not much. I felt like a lot of the tracks kind of sounded like a cool interactive experience, and I look forward to listening to the, this album more. Yeah, um, the Lorna Shore comparison is is there, for, for sure. I rustle feathers when I say things like this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I feel like this is like, if Lorna Shore could actually write good music, this is what it would sound like. Because that's my problem with Lorna Shore. There's a, they're a fantastic band. they got fantastic talent. Um, but they just don't know how to write a good song. Um, I mean, that's kind of a broad statement. They do have good songs. But I'm being very general. But this is this is not that. This is kind of that sound. But every song's written really well. Um, but I think just taking a little bit away from the Lorna Shore comparison. There's a lot of other comparisons I hear too. Mainly Demi Borgir. I yes. feel like there's a lot of yeah. inspiration for with Demi Borgir here, especially the older Demi Borgir stuff. Yeah. Like um, 90s, early 2000s Demi Borgir, which is also cool. And I made that um, comparison when we watched the video for Nordley's, which uh, is a sick song, by the way. The ending of that song just rips. Like this song went into the playlist almost immediately. Um, you mentioned Zweilicht, track number seven, and Symphony of a Dying Star, track number eight. So Zweilicht is awesome because it's an interlude, but it's done like a, like one of those like old school sea shanty kind of things. It's like yeah. an old folk song, almost like warrior singing after or before battle. Um, and yes, it's all in German. And you get kind of a very like a sea shanty kind of vibe with it, which is really cool. It's almost very like, it's almost invigorating. Like you're getting riled up for something. And then Symphony of a Dying Star hits. And A, the drum intro on this song is bonkers. And B, this song has like power metal vibes. Dare I say blackened power metal? Like, is that a thing? Because I think now. it is now. Yeah. Um, the song's just super fucking cool. Into the playlist. Um, just, yeah. It, just those two tracks alone, really, really cool. Uh, the rest of the album just has really good pacing. 
There's some good um, symphonic and orchestral usages. Um, choir in some songs, like the song number, track number four, Pest, has really good choir usage. Um, the last track, Tale of Salt and Light, has really good solo in it. And these are just things I'm picking up off a of first listen. Like, imagine what it's going to be like after listening to this album for a week, the amount of things we're going to be able to say about it. I think there's going to be a exactly, lot. Exactly, yeah. And um, you already mentioned the clean vocals. I'm just so refreshed that there's at least a little bit of vocal variation on here, which yeah, is another problem sure. I had with other bands that, you know, they're really good vocally, but they don't stray from what they're comfortable with. They yeah. just kind of ride this wave and do this thing. This does that, but it also has these little sprinkles of other things in there that break up the pace and make it seem interesting. It keeps it fresh and keeps it from sounding monotonous. I think there's a very wide vocal variety on this album. I wouldn't go quite as far as saying wide at this point, but there's definitely a, a, a range there. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I guess know. maybe that's a better way of putting it. There's a very wide vocal range. I mean, you've got the yeah. cleans and then a little bit of depth within that, and then the harshes, you got really great screams, you got really great growls, like, yeah. he's got all the stuff. Yeah, but you also gotta, I think it's important to also um, talk about the ratio, because the cleans True. is like, it's like a it's like a twenty to one ratio. Yeah, there's, there's about, not there's not much. Yeah, in there. like there's, there's way more harsh. It's like the, the um, track number two you mentioned. There's cleans near the end. It's literally for like maybe a bar, maybe two bars. There's like a couple lines of cleans. It's not a lot, mm -hmm. and it's not like it's not super clean either. It's like it still fits the the vibe of the music, which yeah. is super heavy still. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I, I was impressed on my first listen, and I went back and listened to their last album. It's from 2021, I can't remember what it's called, but in 2021, it was a really close album to being on my HMs that year, because it was it's a pretty solid album. So I went back and listened to it and I went, you know, it's pretty good, but not really quite striking. And that was yesterday, and then today, this comes out and I go, holy crap, these yeah. guys stepped it up big time. And I think they got a new vocalist between now and then. I think so, I yeah. think they switched, they changed vocalists. So um, that could be a big part, new um, band member, new inspiration, new found um, drive for the band, plus mm -hmm. somebody, a new writer in the band, perhaps. Yep. Um, that can all go a long way, and I think in this case it did. So uh, in a sea where a lot of bands are kind of doing a lot of the same things, this is just another one of these bands, Mental Cruelty, that is, it seems to be pushing the boundaries and, and carving their own path. Um, even though they might sound like a this and they might sound like that, they're still carving their own path and I, I respect that so much. So I'm looking forward to listening to this album for the week and I can't wait to hear and see where it takes us. Yeah, don't get it twisted. This was not a review of this album. Next week, our review is going to drop after we listen to this album nonstop over and over and over again. I'm sure excited because I loved it on a first impression and I'm sure you did too. So far so, so good. So anyway guys, that's all we got for you today. Remember to like this video if you liked it. Comment, tell us in the comments below what did you think of this album on its release day and how much you're going to be spending it throughout the week. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. I'm TV Fish. And I'm Wild Self. Keep the horns up.